my heart hurts just a little bit. It's uh uh haven't felt this way since probably 2015 because that's when Gordon was still racing. Um but yeah, that's man, I, I, I'm hurting a little bit. How's it going, guys? Let's talk about the race. Uh, I know I have to shave this beard. This thing is really long, and I like it, but um, I don't know. Comment down below if I should keep it or not. But let's talk about the race. We're at Dover. This was an elimination race. Now, the elimination races are not as exciting as they used to be, I guess, because in the old format last year and, you know, two years ago, uh, basically the, the format was very unfair uh, because it would create a lot of incredible excitement and, you know, just a lot of entertainment, but... It was not really fair. You would just start a new season basically every time, reset the points. In this format, it's a lot more fair where the guys who have already done very well in the regular season, they're basically safe. You know, the top 10 in points are pretty much safe. And then, you know, you got the guys uh, that are lower in the standings that are really fighting it out. So it's more like a 2005-ish kind of entertainment when you know, before the, uh, the, the chase starts. or It was called the, the chase back then. 2005, we're trying to get into that 10th place spot. It's that kind of excitement. It's not the in absolute craziness where, like, eight possible drivers can get eliminated, which I like. Um, it's, it's very fair, and I think it's good. Stage one, you could already tell this race was going to be different. So, number one, we had Kyle Larson, who was actually very good, came into the lead. Uh, we thought Truex would probably be dominating, but that was not the case. Truex and Kyle Busch fell off right at the beginning of the race, and the Hendrick car started moving to the front. Dale Earnhardt Jr. running third. I saw Dale Earnhardt Jr. pass Kyle Busch. I, had a, I thought it was 2006. I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. It was great to see Dale Jr. running that well. I hope at Talladega, I will be the biggest Dale Jr. fan, probably along with many of you guys. At Talladega, I'm putting... Base, I'll, wear, I'll buy a Dale Jr. hat for Talladega. Like that, that, I'll be rooting so hard for him to win that race, because that's the only race I think he can win. But today, he showed speed. He showed that he can compete. And uh, he just needs a little bit more of it. Stage one was a the, the results of stage one was a little bit messed up. So you had your leaders and they were pitting. Now during green flag pit stops, this was huge for the, the playoff implications. The caution came out during green flag, pit stop, green flag pit stops. People like Austin Dillon, they pitted. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., they stayed out. So technically, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. stays on the lead lap. Austin Dillon goes about two laps down. Austin Dillon's day was pretty much done after that. He got a really, really shitty end of the stick there, but that is strategy. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. stays out, Brad Keselowski stays out, Kyle Busch stays out, Danica Patrick stayed out, she had a good finish to stage one, and that was that. So that really set up how the playoffs were going to be for those guys like Jamie Mack and, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Austin Dillon, Ryan Newman, Kurt Busch. Those guys, they had to figure out what they were going to do there, and Ricky Stenhouse hit the, st uh, the strategy in stage one. So we move on to stage two, and stage two, again, the racing was really good. There's no real highlights to show, but at Dover, you don't have the leader going out to a five-second lead. You don't have the top two cars having a ten-second lead on thir third place. You had Truex, you had Kyle Busch, you had Larson, you had Jimmy slowly kind of migrating his way up there, and you had Kenseth up there as well, Chase Elliott up there, but they were all within a certain amount uh, of time. The top three for most of stage two were all within two seconds of each other, and at the end of stage two, they were all within a second of each other. There was no dominant car. Sometimes Truex would lead. Sometimes Larson would lead. You would see Jimmy coming up. Sometimes Kyle Busch would get back up front. You would see Chase Elliott just lurking around there with a fast car. Dale Jr. was up there in the top five for a lot of the race. So there was never a dominant car. You had a lot a lot of uh, diversity, too, with Toyotas. You had Fords and Kevin Harvick. Uh, and you had uh, you had Chevys and Chase Elliott, Jimmy Johnson, and the Hendrick cars that picked up a lot of speed. And then you had your Toyotas. Of Denny Hamlin was up there, Truex, Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth. So this was the race I want to see. I don't want to see, no offense, I don't hate Truex and Kyle Busch. I know a lot of you guys think that's what we're going for. We don't hate them. It's just that you don't want to see the same two cars dominating every week. You want to see parity. And that's what we got this week, where there was not really a dominant car, and they were kind of switching around places, and that creates unpredictability. When you have unpredictability, it creates a really good race, like we saw today. It's the races like Chicago and Darlington, where basically you had a really dominant car, and it was just, and, and New Hampshire as well. You had a really dominant car, and you knew what was going to happen. When you know something's going to happen, you, you just lose interest in it. When it's unpredictable, just like the chase format that was two years ago, it creates a lot of excitement, creates better racing, creates a better product. End of stage two, Kyle Larson wins it. He's able to hang on, get a playoff point. He now has 34 playoff points. So Kyle Larson, all he has to do, for all the Kyle Larson fans, all he has to do for the rest of the playoffs is just consistently finish top 10 and top 5. If he can do that, he'll make Homestead. 
Uh, he doesn't have to really go out and risk a lot of things. He just has to have enough speed to finish top five. And he should be able to make it a homestead because Truex is basically a lock. Kyle Busch also most likely will be a lock. And, you know, just Larson, you just got to continue to get those top fives. Now, the beginning of stage three, this was about 140 laps to go or 150 laps to go, somewhere 160 laps to go, I don't even know. But Larson was actually shutting off the engine, saving fuel like all drivers do. You shut off the engine with a little switch, you coast a little bit, turn it back on, you're saving a little bit of fuel. But... The car basically shut off. He had to restart the ECU. He lost a couple spots because if you don't maintain the, the pace car speed under caution and the cars drive by you, you lose those spots. So Larson loses the spots. And he goes back to, I think it was fifth place or somewhere around there. He was leading coming off pit road. And then he goes back to around fifth or sixth. This puts someone I have not talked about that much. This puts Chase Elliott into the lead. Now, Chase Elliott had a pretty good car. I didn't think it was the best. Uh, it puts Truex second, and Kyle Busch, I think, was around the third place area. So I was expecting Kyle Busch and Martin Truex Jr. to kind of get back to their dominating ways, especially Truex. I was expecting that 78 car to dominate. The restart goes on. Now, this is around 150 laps to go. Nobody knew that this would be the last restart, but Chase Elliott pulls away. And Chase Elliott has about a, a second lead on Truex, and then Jimmy Johnson's coming up, and he's third. And Jimmy Johnson's like, you know, the 11-time winner at Dover is going to come out of nowhere and win this race. With all the speed that Hendrick have not shown this year, they just somehow magically, at Dover, one of their good tracks, but at Dover, they are running three cars in the top five. Dale Jr. was running fifth, Jimmy was running third, Chase Elliott was in the lead. That was very nice to see. You had the 18 and the 78 running second and fourth, and it was just nice to see. It was, uh, you know, parody, like I said. You had the two heavyweights battling it out now. It's not just JGR dominating it. I want to see a Hendrick versus JGR battle. That's really what I want to see. Throw in Haas, throw in Penske. That's what we want. So back to the race, basically. Chase Elliott is pulling away. He pulls out to a two-second lead. Pulls out to a three-second lead. Caution's not coming out. Larson can't come back from sixth, sixth place. His car just kind of went away once he got back in traffic. And that was pretty much expected because aero, that's, the race was good, but the aero dynamics are still an issue. Like you can get back in fifth and you can't make your way up. So that's still a problem. But Chase Elliott has clean air. He's pulling away. The pit stops that happen. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Ryan Newman, they're kind of like two spots. There's two points between them. They're trying to figure out how to get there. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. asking Danica to let him go as a nice, you know, girlfriend present. And that was all, all that stuff was going on while Chase Elliott is just methodically pulling away. Pulls out to a four second lead. The pit stops go through. No caution comes out. There were a couple of cars trying to bet their way into getting a caution, like Keselowski and, and Kyle Busch even. Kyle Busch did not pit for about another 10 to 15 laps. Keep that in mind. Chase Elliott pits the lap after Martin Truex Jr. pits because Truex was pitting uh, second, so they're kind of racing each other. And then when, when you know, green flag still going out 60 laps to go, 50 laps to go, Truex just starts falling. I have no idea what happened to Truex's car, but he just kind of just faded away. And Kyle, Kyle Busch comes up to second. Now, he was four seconds behind Chase Elliott at the time he came up to second with around 50 laps to go or whatever it was. But you have to remember, he had fresher tires. It was about 10 laps fresher tires than Chase Elliott. But with the new tire that Dover brought and that NASCAR brought to Dover, which was a great call, has a lot of tire wear. It's the one at Darlington. Uh, so there's a lot of fall off in the tires. Uh, so you do have to manage the tires. You're slipping and sliding all over the place, coming out of the corners. And that's the racing a lot of the drivers want to see because that involves car control. I think that's why you saw the Hendrick cars v doing very well this week is because when you have a lot of fall off in the tires and you have a track like Dover where it really comes down to just managing that throttle, Jimmy's excellent at it. And Chase Elliott has already had three top fives in his career and he's definitely learning from Jimmy and doing very well at Dover. They're moving on and 30 laps to go, 25 laps to go. Kyle Busch cuts the lead to two seconds. 10 laps to go. Kyle Busch is like 7 tenths of a second. Now, this is where I want to get into this. So we have to talk about Ryan Newman and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. You're fighting for a playoff spot. At this very moment, if you guys didn't see the race, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. had the spot. He had the 12th spot. Uh, Newman was two points behind him, so he needed two spots. Now, he was trying to catch someone or, or anything like that, but there was no one in front of him that he could catch, and there was no one behind him that would catch him. In the last 10 laps, he was in this area where he couldn't make up any spots and he couldn't he, he couldn't lose any spots. Now, you're racing for your playoff hopes, so you're not supposed to let the leaders go. You, you, you just got to go. But here's the thing. So 10 laps to go, Chase Elliott is coming up on Ryan Newman. Now, Chase Elliott's car seemed to have faded away a little bit, but Kyle Busch also had fresher tires. It was a mix of the two things. 
that caused this. And it was a great finish. If you guys didn't see the finish, I'd recommend go watching the last 10 laps. Great finish. A lot of excitement, a lot of anxiety. It was awesome. But when you're, when you're doing that and you're running behind Newman, and I'm telling you guys, Elliot caught Newman, I think 15 laps to go, 10 laps to go. Five laps to go. Can't get by him. Could it, could Elliot have moved up the track? Maybe. I think he should have. I think Chase Elliott should have moved up the track. He was running the low line where Newman was running, and there was also a couple other lap cars there, and he wasn't moving up. Kyle Busch was running the high lane. Kyle Busch was getting the runs off the corner. He had the cleaner air up there, and he was making up time. I don't know if Chase was uncomfortable going up there. Maybe his car didn't want to do that. He looked loose coming off the corners. I don't know what it was, but... There comes a moment where there's about five laps to go. Ryan Newman knows he can't catch anyone in front of him. He can't catch anyone behind, or there's no one catching anyone behind him. You are impeding the race for the win. And I saw drivers like Ryan Blaney get straight out of the way, and a couple other cars get straight out of the way. And I understand Newman's situation is a little bit different because he's fighting for that playoff spot, but you are in a, you're in a situation where you can't really do anything. So just out of morality and just doing the right thing, I think, in my opinion, you guys can disagree with me, just disagree with it, but in my opinion, if I was Ryan Newman, if I asked my crew chief, can I catch the guys ahead of me, how far they are, if they told me they're like two seconds ahead of me with five laps to go, and I saw the leader right behind me who's been trying to pass me for 10 laps and second place is catching him, if I was in that spot, I'd pull over, I'd let the two leaders go by. That's usually the right thing to do in NASCAR when it's the end of the race and the leaders are coming, the lap cars usually, no matter what, they get out of the way. Ryan Newman is known to not get out of the way of anyone. So it's understandable, and that's just how he drives. He broke my heart in 2014 when he body slammed Larson because I was a JG fan, so I'm used to it. But that was, in my opinion, the wrong thing to do. I know Ryan Newman's not in a great car. He's in an RCR car. Those cars are not that good right now. I know he's trying all he can to do what, what he can, but that was the wrong thing to do, in my opinion, and he should have gotten out of the way. Because he didn't get out of the way... And because Chase Elliott would not move up to the high line, he wouldn't try to block off uh, Kyle Busch's run. With two laps to go, Kyle Busch overtakes Chase Elliott, and Chase Elliott still cannot win his first career race. Kyle Busch goes ahead and wins it, another uh, five playoff points for him, and he's, again, probably going to be set for Homestead, just has to kind of just take his time, top five his way to Homestead, try to win, you know, somewhere there. He'll be fine. He'll get there. The heartbreak comes for Chase Elliott. So a lot of you guys know I support Chase Elliott, but I never found myself being like a huge fan of him. Ever since Gordon retired, I've become very unbiased and I've kind of enjoyed NASCAR that way. That's why I have the channel. That's why I do the post-race reviews. I can remain unbiased. I can enjoy the racing. Today was the first time where I really saw myself like, yeah, I'm probably back to supporting a driver because Chase Elliott ran an excellent race today. He was downright fantastic. And just at the end of the race, he just kind of lost that bit. And what hurts me the most, and I think what hurts a lot of people, and the reason why a lot of people like him, he's so humble. He doesn't do anything wrong. He's a great guy. Parents rose him great. Everything. He's just awesome, right? He is so... And I saw this with Gordon a little bit towards the end of his career, because Jeff was a little bit like that as well. But he was also... Jeff was very, very confident. When I see him, When I look at Chase Elliott, I see him as a kid. I'm 20 years old. He's 21. He just turned 20, 21. He's basically my age. I see a kid. That's what I see. I see a kid. I don't really see a man yet. I don't see a grown man. I see a kid who has an immense amount of talent. A, like, insane amount of talent. He just needs confidence. That's the one thing I see in him. He's so unbelievably hard on himself. He, he has kind of like a fragile mental state where he can think of what goes wrong instead of what goes right. Instead of moving to the high line, like I thought he should have done, I thought with 10 laps to go, I was telling Chase, like, through the TV, go high. Look, try to get around Newman on the high side. There's clean air there. But he wouldn't do it because he always thinks, what can go wrong? He's not, he's not thinking of what can I do to make it go right. And I think what he should have done there is went high. And it just kind of plays into his personality of being just such a humble, nice guy but also being fragile. I'm, I can relate to it. I'm, I have like social anxiety, basically. I, I, I am a very shy person. I feel like Chase is kind of like that too, but with him, he's lacking a little bit of confidence. He's gone through so many situations over the last two years where he hasn't been able to win, and he's been in so many close situations where he probably should have won, but he hasn't. And it's kind of, it's really digging at his confidence now. And uh, I mean, everyone tells him, Gordon, Hendrick, Jimmy, Bill Elliott, everyone tells him, you know, you're good enough. You're, you're awesome. You're, you're going to get this done. 
he just has to believe it. And today, you know, he he unfortunately made a mistake, I think. He made a mistake. So, hurts me, hurts him, hurts all the Chase Elliott fans. I think I can honestly say I pro- I'm probably a good Chase Elliott fan now. So, I'll try to remain unbiased. Uh, but also, when William Byron gets in that 24 car, I'm going to have to root for them too. Uh, I'm going to have to root for the entire Hendrick group. So, I'll remain unbiased for the post-race reviews. For, I know some of you guys want that. But other guys want to know how I actually feel about the race. That's how I felt. That was awesome. That's that's what's cool about being an NASCAR fan is when your driver is getting that situation. I haven't, I, as a fan, I have not been in that situation for about three years. Ever since Gordon retired and his last year wasn't all that great. So, I've not been in that situation where I'm really just like rooting for a driver to win in a close race. I haven't been there. So, uh, it was kind of a different experience. It made me feel like a kid again, even though I'm, I'm still a kid. Here are the race results and uh, the playoff standings. Austin Dillon is eliminated. Kurt Busch is eliminated. Uh, Ryan Newman is eliminated. And who's the last driver? I keep forgetting who the last driver is. Casey Kane. I can't believe I forgot Casey Kane. I'm sorry, Casey. Casey Kane is eliminated as well. The top 12 continue to move on. Stenhouse got very lucky to get in there, but he did what he needed to do. He's in. Uh, Chase Elliott's in. Matt Kenseth is in. All the other guys are in. Chase Elliott kind of hurt him a little bit not winning this race because those playoff points are going to mean a lot. Like I said, Larson, Kyle Busch, Truex, Keselowski, they have a lot of playoff points, and they're going to be able to use those throughout the next couple of rounds. So I think for guys like Jimmy, guys like Kenseth, Chase, Ryan Blaney, I think they really need to start maybe winning stages and winning races to have a chance to get to Homestead. Or they're going to have to win one of the final, you know, the, the one of the final four races if they advance to the round of eight. I think Larson Truex and Kyle Busch are a lock, so I only see one more spot. You might have to win a race to get there, or you might have to just be just completely stellar in three races throughout the stages as well to get the stage points uh, to make it on in points. So it's going to be very difficult for those guys. Um, and Talladega is always in the second round, so that'll be interesting as well. Shout out to Dale Earnhardt Jr. He had a great race. I loved seeing him there. I mentioned him earlier in the, in the, the video, but I loved seeing him there. It's awesome to see when he runs well. I've missed it. You know, I, I missed when Tony Stewart ran well. It, it hurt me when Gordon wasn't running well, and it hurt me this year when Dale Jr. is not running well. But today he ran well. It was just nice to see the 88 up there. It was nice to see the Hendrick cars up there again. Just feels like how it should be. You know, the big guys going at it. Not just one team, not one or, one organization completely dominating. We had parity today, and it just felt good. If Penske could be a little bit stronger, I'd appreciate that too. So we move on to the next round. Uh, I don't have the playoff points yet. Uh, because NASCAR haven't haven't updated them, but all you have to do is add the playoff points that each driver has. Um, just calculate what they have for playoff points. Add that to, to 2,000 basically, and that's what they have. Um, so that's how you'll be able to calculate the points. Resetting it just with the playoff points intact from what they earned in the first three rounds or first three races, and then we move on. My playoff prediction is completely screwed because I picked Kurt Busch to go to the final four. So. I went really wrong on that. Let me know how your guys' uh, weekend went. Let me know how your predictions for the championship are. Did anyone who you thought wouldn't advance, did they advance? Did anyone who you thought uh, would advance? And, you know, all that stuff. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. But, yeah, it was a good race. I'm a little bit heartbroken, but it is what it is. Overall, I would give the race probably a B plus to an A minus. I think the finish, if Chase Elliott would have pulled away, I think the, I would have given it like a B but because Kyle Busch was able to run him down and we had a great finish, A minus. I'd give it an A minus. Could have been a little bit better, but Dover with with the, the racing that is at Dover is just great. And just hopefully we get the cars to be a little bit better and it'll be excellent. So we still go to some tracks where the racing will always be great. And then we go to those other tracks where it shows the cars flaws. Uh, but today was a good race and we had a good finish. And I'm very shocked NASCAR did not throw a debris caution. Thank you. I kind of appreciate that. No more debris cautions, please. Guys, if you liked the video, make sure the like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Charlotte is next week. And let's see what happens there. Peace out. I can't change. Even if I try. Even if I wanted to. And I can't change. Even if I try. My love, my love, my love. She keeps me warm.